Hello. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Sundiata, which is uh, an epic tale, of, a foundation tale uh, from Mali in West Africa. Um, so this is a story about the foundations of the Mali Empire uh, with one of its first kings, uh, Sundiata, hence the title of the epic. It's one of the inspirations for The Lion King, along with Hamlet. Um, but the, the story of Sundiata is a really, really interesting uh, tale about loss of home, uh, about exile, about uh, overcoming adversity, and so on and so on. So essentially what happens is uh, there's a king who rules in West Africa and this is prior to the establishment of the Mali Empire which is, is more or less founded by Sundiata himself um, and he is told in a prophecy that if he marries an ugly woman uh, she will bear him a strong son who will be a great king. So this this initial king already has a wife um, but when these traders bring in a very ugly woman uh, the king remembers the prophecy and he marries her and he has this son named Sundiata part of the problem does Sundiata has two big problems Sundiata and his mother have two big problems one is that the first wife and her son is extremely jealous of this uh, second wife and second son's position, uh, the favor that they have with the king, because they feel that as the first wife and the oldest son of this king, they should have prominence, uh, and, that, and that he should be the king rather than Sundiata, uh, even though there's this prophecy. The other problem, of course, is that because Sundiata can't walk, it's kind of quite difficult for him to become a great warrior and a great king. So, uh, what ends up happening is the king dies, and uh, Sundiata and his mother are exiled, and Sundiata vows that he's going to return and that he's going to become the king of a great empire. He tries to learn to walk and initially what he what he does in order to try this is he he goes to the blacksmith in the kingdom that he's been sent to in exile and he has this blacksmith make him an iron rod that he's going to try and use sort of like a crutch but as he tries to pull himself up on this iron rod, it snaps. So he goes out and he gets a, uh, a piece of hardwood, a hardwood staff, and he uses the staff to pull himself up. And uh, basically you get a sort of Rocky Balboa training kind of thing because uh, once he, once Sundiata can walk, once he's pulled himself upright on this staff, basically he goes from crawling around in the dirt to mighty warrior very, very quickly. Uh, so he becomes such a prominent warrior that he actually becomes uh, heir to the throne of this other kingdom that he's been exiled to. At some point, they get word that uh, Sundiata's kingdom, the kingdom he, he originally came from, that his brother now rules over, even though their dad wanted Sundiata to be on the throne, um, that that kingdom has been attacked by a powerful enemy, uh, and Sundiata's brother has fled. So, Sundiata basically uh, takes a massive army and starts sweeping through West Africa, just conquering, 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 conquering. 
um, so you can think of uh, you can think of uh, Tamerlane the Great in uh, the Christopher Marlowe play. You can think of uh, Joshua in the Old Testament. These figures who just sort of go from victory to victory to victory, um, and ultimately through his military prowess, through his piety, through his uh, uh, benevolence, etc., etc., Sundiata becomes king of a massive empire in West Africa, the Mali Empire. And so the, the narrative, the epic, becomes that foundational story that tells of how this empire came to be which of course is a very, very common uh, type of narrative, something that we see across cultures is, is an origin story. But one of the things that I find really fascinating about uh, the epic of Sundiata, at least in this version, and there are different versions, this is the, the DT Niane version, um, but one of the things that I find really fascinating is that there's extended discussions of the role of the griot, or the griot, um, which is a, a West African um, praise singer slash storyteller slash historian slash uh, mythologist slash poet. Um, so griots are, are a really important uh, element, or they're a really important figure in uh, traditional uh, West African culture in countries like Mali, Senegal, Cote d'Ivoire, etc., etc. Um, so so the, the epic of Sundiata has an extensive discussion of the function of this figure in the courts. So I want to read you this, this bit, uh, the opening portion of the words of the griot Mamadou, Mamaduo Kui Kriyate. Sorry. I am a griot. It is I, Jele Mamadua Koyate, son of Bintu Kuyate and Jele uh, Kedian Kuyate, master in the art of eloquence. Since time immemorial, the Kuyates have been in the service of the Keta princes of Mali. We are vessels of speech. We are the repositories which harbor secrets many centuries old. The art of eloquence has no secrets for us. Without us, the names of kings... Sorry, there's a motorcycle going by. Without us, the names of kings would vanish into oblivion. We are the memory of mankind. By the spoken word, we bring to life the deeds and exploits of kings for younger generations. I derive my knowledge from my father, Jele Kedan, who also got, his, got it from his father. History holds no mystery for us. We teach to the vulgar just as much as we want to teach them, for it is we who keep the keys to the twelve doors of Mali. I know the list of all the sovereigns who succeeded to the throne of Mali. I know how the black people divided into tribes, for my father bequeathed to me all his learning. I know why such and such is called Kamara, another Keta, and another Sibibe or Traore. Every name has a meaning, a secret import. I teach kings the history of their ancestors so that the lives of the ancients might serve them as an example, for the world is old, but the future springs from the past. My word is pure and free of all untruth. It is the word of my father. It is the word of my father's father. I will give you my father's words just as I received them. Royal griots do not know what lying is. When a quarrel breaks out between tribes, it is we who settle the difference, for we are the repositories of oaths which the ancestors swore. Listen to my words, you who want to know. By my mouth you will learn the history of Mali. So, again, these are... These are historians, these are poets, these are the praise singers of kings and rulers, um, and they're also ethical teachers because they teach their listeners the history of the empire, the history of uh, 
the royal line, the history of the tribe or the nation or whatever it is. And so they play an incredibly important role because, I mean, the Epic of Sundiata was not written down until the era of French colonialism in West Africa. Um, and so for centuries, these stories were preserved just as uh, this passage from the Griot says, they were passed down from father to son through oral tradition. So they were, these histories were memorized. Uh, I mean, basically, this is, this is a, a sort of similar function to what we see in uh, other oral cultures, other epic poems or stories or whatever it is. So we see the same kind of thing in, say, the Iliad and the Odyssey. Uh, we see the same kind of thing in Beowulf. Uh, we see similar things in East Asian oral traditions, for instance. So this is, a, for me, a really, really interesting feature because of, 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 of the, the Epic of Sundiata, because not only is it clearly part of an oral tradition that's been passed down as history from generation to generation, it also tells us about that process. It tells us what the griot does, who they are, and why they're significant. And so that's a really, really interesting aspect of uh, the oral tradition that this, that this story has been preserved, through, through which this story has been preserved, we'll say.